So what I do to find out, you know, when I start positive reinforcement training is I make a, a little pan like this, um, put a bunch of different things in there, and then I put it in the horse's pen and then leave him alone. And then I'll come back later and see what he ate. Uh, and then that will tell me uh, which treats that he actually likes. Um, and so then I can start uh, doing the training, um, feeding in the pan using the treats that he likes. Uh, and eventually, once he understands what the training is, um, I will. So anyways, once he understands what the training is, I'll transition to just pellets, um, just hay pellets. And he's getting hay pellets right now, <clears throat> so he should know, know what those are. But um, know what those are. Uh, but this is Citro's Kentucky Makeover Horse um, Pelos. And I'd like to start incorporating positive reinforcement in his training because um, I find it works best for training tricks. So um, we'll see what he likes. We'll come back, see what he decided was good and not. Uh, so I had to do voiceover because it was just really windy. Uh, so what he ended up eating were the hay cubes, which is awesome because I have a lot of hay cubes and um, those are pretty easy to feed. So that's what we're going to use. Pelos. You like the little treats? Okay, so this is the start of the training now that I know what he will eat. And I just grabbed the pan and kind of put it um, a little bit closer to him. And he is not, like, if they're scared and running away from you, obviously you, you, you can't do this. And so what I'm doing is I am clicking and then I throw a treat in. And then I click and then I throw a treat in. And then I walk away so that I um, remove the pressure in my presence. Uh, and he's kind of a curious horse, so he walked up and is going to go check it out. And, um, and he ate some of it. Um, and that's perfect. So this is the very, very beginning where they start to associate the click and then um, they'll hear the the food go into the pan and they'll know that that is um, a treat and and then afterward I will transition that to actually being able to feed him it by hand um, when I click um, so that's the difference between um, just you know giving them food reward and actually using positive reinforcement where uh, they associate my click with, um, it's, it ends up being a yes answer. So I'm telling him that he's doing something right instead of with negative reinforcement is we, uh, uh, in, a, in a sense, we're telling them, you know, that they're doing something wrong. And then when they do something right, we relieve the pressure. So I find that when they do something and we say yes, that's so much easier than, kind of waiting, saying no, until they find the release, and then we say yes. So I, I hope I explained that well. Um, in my head, it makes sense. So um, so then I'm going to come back and try it again, where I'm going to do, I think I just ended up letting him kind of sniff me. He's super sweet. And so I end up clicking and throwing that in there. And sometimes that's even too much pressure, that noise, and they'll take off. Um, and then if that's the case, what I'll do is I might even be outside the pen and click and, and throw it in the pan, or I'll just do it a couple times, click and throw it in the pan and then completely leave the pen and let them eat and just build on that. And then pretty soon they're not reactive to the sound anymore. And, um, I, I wouldn't rush it with, um, you know, some horses aren't as curious as this guy. Um, once they start to really relax, they start to eat more. And like I said, we're already feeding him pellets. Um, so that's a really a go-to for me is that I will start um, using pellets because they've already started eating those. And so once they're in a relaxed enough state um, that they can eat near me or they start being curious about eating things. And so what I'm doing here is I'm approaching and petting him and then clicking and treating that. Um, so I'm rewarding the... Um, my my petting him and him standing there and then he'll start to associate me coming up with good things like this horse in particular likes to be rubbed 
And so I will touch him, click, and then treat, and then walk away. So I'm using a combination of positive and negative reinforcement to help him understand what I want. Um, and what we're basically doing here is teaching him how to learn uh, using these tools. So the tool of positive reinforcement, when he does something that I like, I say yes with my click and treat. And then um, negative reinforcement in same thing. He's doing something that I like. He's standing there quietly, letting me pet him. And then I completely remove my body and pressure away from him. And that is their reinforcer as well. So I find they learn really fast this way. So I really hope that this, um, or I hope that this helps you see how you can start incorporating positive reinforcement. And just to be really clear, positive reinforcement is not your horse does something good and you give him a treat. You have to have a bridge signal. You have to have that click or word uh, that means that marks the behavior. So mine is like that I do with my mouth and that marks the behavior right when they do the behavior and then the treat follows. So it is not, okay, your horse lay down. Okay, I give you a treat, you're a good boy. No, that is not positive reinforcement training. Um, so just to make that really, really clear, you have to have that mark um, signal in order to mark the behavior. Uh, and then after a while, you only have to have, you can just use that, um, like mine is that cluck, you can just use that to mark the behavior. You don't always have to follow it up with a reinforcer. So this was really good. Like I'm trying to approach him because he doesn't, we're working on his mane. Now I've been able to brush his mane. And so that was kind of a big deal. And I, same thing, I clicked and treated and then I come back. And so when he stood there quietly and moved his head away so that I could get to his mane, so he's trying to block me a little bit there. And so I just kind of worked my way over gradually. And then when he kind of, um, it's funny because he hasn't actually tried to bite me, but he looks like he wants to. So when he goes away and he relaxes a little bit and he's not pushing me, then that's when I will click and treat. Um, so I hope that that kind of helps when you're trying to, you know, introduce this with a wild Mustang. Uh, that doesn't know what treats are, doesn't know what positive reinforcement is, doesn't know how to be fed by the hand, doesn't know any of that stuff, you can actually still start incorporating uh, this training into that. So um, I hope that helps. Um, this is just what I've learned how to do. Um, put the goodie pan out and goodie pan, what I call it, goodie pan out and just see what they like. Um, and they'll tell you, I mean, you can put apples, fruit, like all kinds of different things out there and see what they actually eat um, without you there. I mean, don't stand there and watch them. They won't eat. And then um, uh, it, this works so much better than like a handful of hay. And I, I don't know, I just, I really, really don't agree with trying to feed them by hand right away. Um, I, I think that that has to be built up too. Um, so hope that helps. Mm -hmm.